Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk, well I'm actually going to give an example of quite an awkward question that could come up for GPE. So what I have here is I've got an object which weighs uh, 100 kilograms at the surface of the earth and I'm going to put it, it's orbiting around that and I'm going to put it into orbit 100 kilometers from the surface of the earth. And I want to know how much chemical energy, how much change in energy this object feels. So, if we look at just the pure energy changes, this object is moving this way. It's also at the top of the mass. So, not only has this got kinetic energy, but it also has some GPE too. Up here, it is orbiting as well. So it's got kinetic energy here, and it's also got some GPE here too. And I need to know the difference between these two points to work out how much my thrusters actually have to be burnt, or the chemical energy that I need to input to change my orbit. So, how I do this is I work out the energy at one position, the total energy, the kinetic energy and the GPE, and then I work out the energy at the other bit, and then I work out the difference. That difference is the energy that the thrusters need to give to move that thing to the other orbit. Okay, so we're going to do it at the surface, and I'm going to first do the kinetic energy. And I know that's a half mv squared, so I need to find the velocity that the object is moving at the surface. And I do that by equating mv squared over r and gmm over r squared. So this orbital velocity, v, is going to be this formula here. So if I cancel the m's out, I cancel this r out, I am left with the orbital velocity, or squared, is gm over r. So the square root of g m over r. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out my orbital velocity first. So v is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by the mass of the Earth. Now this is on your data sheet and it is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 all over r, which is the radius of the Earth which is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 metres. And I need to square root that. And I get a value of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by 5.98 times 10 to the 24 all over 6.37 times 10 to the 6. And I need to square root that. Equals 7913 metres per second. That does seem fast, but it is correct. You are moving at about, you're orbiting about 7,000 metres per second. Okay. Now let's put this into kinetic energy. So we're going to square that. Times by 100 divided by 2 is... So that's the first part. That's the kinetic energy. And now I'm going to work out the GPE. So to work out the gravitational potential energy of the 100 grams, I need to work out the gravitational potential. So, gravitational potential. Can you see here that my Vs look different? This is important. Make sure that your velocity Vs and your gravitational potential Vs, Vs look different. Okay. Is minus Gm over R. So this is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by 5.98 times 10 to the 24 all over 6.37 times 10 to the eight, uh, 6. Okay, and that's a minus number. Remember, gravitational fields are minus because you need to do work to remove them. Okay, so 6.67 times 10 to the minus... So 
So that's how many joules per kilogram it is. So this is the gravitational potential. And to get the gravitational potential energy, we're going to need to times this by m. So we're going to need this times by 100. Okay. So this is how much energy I would need to add to remove this object from the field. Okay. So in total, at the surface, so the total equals this plus this. So that's going to be minus 3.13 times 10 to the 9 joules. Okay. Now, I want to find what it is at the 10 kilometres, 100 kilometres high. So, at the 100 kilometres, and again, I'm going to find the orbital velocity. So using the same formula I did here, that V equals square root of G M over R. I am going to find my thing. So I'm going to have 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And I need to add 100 kilometres to my six point, my radius of the Earth. So 6.37 times 10 to the 6 plus 100 times 10 to the 3 is divided by 6.47 times 10 to the 6. I'm going to square root that. And I get an answer. Of 7851 metres per second. Again, I'm happy with that. Okay. So that's my velocity. So my kinetic energy. It's a half times 100 times v squared, and that's going to be 3.1 times 10 to the 9 joules. And now I'm going to work out my GPE at that point, so I need to work out my potential at that point. So potential minus gm over r. So minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by 5.98 times 10 to the 24 over R, which is going to be 6.47 times 10 to the 6. This is working out my potential. Now I'm going to times it by my mass. So, so adding it together. I've got three minus 3.06 times 10 to the 9 joules. So at the start, I had minus 3.13. So I'm just put this on the side. So at the surface, my energy in total was minus 3.13 times 10.13 times 10 to the 9 joules. And at 100 kilometers, it was. Minus 3.06 times 10 to the 9 joules. This difference in energy, okay, so the difference equals plus 0 0.07 times 10 to the 9 joules. So that's how much energy, this difference between at the surface and at 100 kilometres is this 0.07 times 10 to the 9 joules. This means 
because energy must be conserved, this energy must have come from somewhere. This energy in total has come from the thrusters, the actual chemical reaction in the thrusters. So the thrusters have burnt chemical energy, that much to be precise, to move this object from here to here. And as you can see, even though the kinetic energy has gone down, I have still done work via moving through a field. So the object has slowed down, it hasn't got as much kinetic energy, but I have had to do work moving through the field and that work is done by the chemical energy in the thrusters. So in an exam, you may be asked to work out how to calculate the energy or the difference in energy from one position of field to the other. And the important thing to remember is that when you're in one position of an orbital field, you have kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. So you need to calculate both. So this is what I did. I calculated the kinetic energy and I calculated the gravitational potential energy. I calculated that at the surface. I did that at the other position. And what I did was find the difference between the two. And that there is an example of using orbital mechanics to work out the energy needed to transfer what, something from one position in an orbit to another position in an orbit, taking into consideration the energy changes involved. And that is an orbital energy change.